Hey guys, tonight we're going to be covering National Research Corporation. Now, you know I break my stocks down into three tiers. The ones on my watch list, there's the three star, the most fundamentally sound, two stars, which is belief that, and one star, which is the lowest, still on the watch list, still fundamentally sound but the least fundamentally sound on the watch list. National Research Corporation is a three star. They're currently at $37.97 a share. Yahoo analysts don't give an estimate on what this stock can move up to, but my estimate based on PE ratio is $46.51 a share. Now, having said that, let's jump into the analysis on this company. National Research Corporation, ticker symbol NRC. In the previous five years, we don't have 2023's figures yet. They haven't been released. But in 2018... They were at $28.30 a share at their low price, $38.45 a share in their high price. That was an increase of 35.87% during the course of the year. In 2019, they were at $34.17 at their low price, $62.71 at their high price. That was an increase of 83.52% during the course of the year. In 2020, they were at $32.64 at their low price, $65.60 at their high price. That was an increase of 100.98% in the course of the year. However, in 2021 and 22, they came back down to earth. In 2821, they were at $37.81 in their low price, $51.32 in their high price. That was an increase of 35.73% during the course of the year. And they were at $30.36 at their low price. $40.01 at their high price. That was an increase of 31.79% in the course of the year. Now, let's look at a few projections. If we look at the projections, this stock moved up some today. So it's currently at 37 point ninety seven thirty seven dollars and ninety seven cents this stock moved up some today so it's currently at thirty seven dollars and ninety seven cents however when I caught it it was at thirty six dollars and eighty seven cents now let's suppose that that's its low price for the year which would be a PE of 31.78. In that case, if this stock moved up from $36.87 to the estimate that I had for it, which was $46.51, providing the earnings per share stays consistent, it would end up moving up 26.15% by the end of the year. Having said that, let's take a look at the fundamentals for this company. So if we go to the income statement, we see in 2018, they made $119,686,000. In 
they return retains thirty million forty seven thousand after paying all expenses. That was a profit margin of twenty five point ten percent. What I would consider decent. They may or good. In twenty nineteen, they made a hundred and twenty seven million nine hundred and eighty two thousand and they retained thirty two million two hundred and ninety seven thousand after expenses for a profit margin of twenty five point twenty four percent. In twenty twenty, they made a hundred and thirty three million eight hundred and ten thousand. And after paying expenses, they retained thirty seven million two hundred and three thousand. That was profit margin of twenty seven point eighty percent. And that was COVID year. In twenty twenty one, they made a hundred and forty seven million nine hundred and fifty four thousand. And after paying expenses, they retained thirty seven million four hundred and forty eight thousand. That was a profit margin of twenty five point thirty one percent. And in twenty twenty two, they made a hundred and fifty one million five hundred and sixty eight thousand. And after paying expenses, they retained thirty one million seven hundred and eighty four thousand. That was a profit margin of 20.97%. Lower than the previous years, but still, I would still consider that decent to good. So let's look at their return on equity. In 2018, their return on now, we know that when the Debt to equity is over 200%. The return on equity can be a little exaggerated. It may not be exactly what it appears. And in the first two years, this company's debt to equity was over 200%. In 2018, their debt to equity was 466.12%. Return on equity showed as 157.45. In 2019, debt to equity was 236.51%. And the return on equity showed as 98.19. In the three following years, the debt to equity fell to under 200%. Return on equity in 2020 was 57.84. That's pretty spectacular. In 2021, it was 43.88. Still very good. And 2022, it was 44.12%. Still very good. The debt to equity for those years, in 27, it was 107.45, 2021, 84.61, and 2022, 81.11. And we should see those numbers reflected in the balance sheet. And we see that in the balance sheet, we see that in 2018 and 2019, their current liabilities actually exceeded their current assets. But in 2021, in 2020, 21, and 22, the current assets exceeded the current liabilities. Same thing with total assets and total liabilities for all five years. Now, this company did pay a dividend. In 2018, they paid out 16,859,000 in dividends. In 2019, they paid 31,299,000 in dividends. In 2020, 
they paid 10,517,000 in dividends. In 2021, they paid 9,159,000 in dividends. And in 2022, they paid 20,961,000 in dividends. And we see that as far as their stock, we always like to see when a company is buying back more of their own stock. Well, in 2018 and 19, there were no changes. But in 2020, 21, and 22, this company did buy back more of their own stock. We see their free cash flow for all five years was positive. 33,877,000 in 2018, 36,216,000 in 2019, 36,652,000 in 2020, 40,830,000 in 2021, and 26,430,000 2022. But even more impressive, this company pays out a dividend. The free cash flow will tell us if they can afford to pay this dividend. And we see that after they paid out the money for their dividends from the free cash flow, in 2018, they had still had 17 million 18,000 left over. In 2019, they had 4 million 962,000 left over. In 2020, they had 26 million 135,000 left over. In 2021, they had 31 million 671,000 left over. And in 2022, they had 5,469,000 left over. So even after paying their dividend, they still had free cash flow. Now, the dividend wasn't a large one. It was considerably small, only 12 cents a share. However... This is not the most expensive company, so the dividend yield came out to 1.30%. They have a beta of 0 0.43, which means it moves them about half as much as the general market. This company has 24 Point fifty six million outstanding shares. And of those 24.56 million outstanding shares, 39.86% of them are owned by insiders. Those who work in the company or are a part of it, that's an astounding number for insiders. 49.40% is owned by large banks and institutions. And they, well, actually, they've already paid out their dividend, their last dividend and their ex dividend. So, this company is managed by Mr. Michael D. Hayes, who was born in 1955. So he's probably in his 40s. Still has a bit of time ahead of him. He is the CEO, president, and director, but he's also the founder, meaning he started the company. And NRC was founded in 1981. He's been the CEO since then. 
National Research Corporation is in the health information services industry and healthcare sector. GE Healthcare, Viva Systems, and Health Equity are the largest in the industry. National Research Corporation is 21st. So that's our analysis, analysis or my analysis for National Research Corporation. Guys, look forward to speaking to you in the next video.